Hello students, welcome to the lecture series on corporate accounting. Today we shall take up part 7 for accounting of banking companies. In our previous lecture, we have discussed how to prepare p and account. In today's lecture, we shall take up a practical example and understand how a vertical form of balance sheet will be prepared for a banking company. We will learn all schedules in detail with practical example that is from schedule 1 to schedule 16. First of all, we need to prepare the p and L. its profit will go to the balance sheet, then we will prepare the schedules of balance sheet and finally, we will give shape to balance sheet. So, let us take up a practical example, analyze which amount and which line of asset or expense will go under which schedule. So, asset liability expense and income have to be segregated as per the schedules, we need to identify them we need to place the items in the correct schedule and do the accounting as per the guidelines available to us for preparation and presentation of balance sheet of any banking company. So, let us start up our discussion with the help of a practical example. Uh, on our screen, we have a question where asset side and liability side is being given. First of all, we are working on the asset side. The particulars are given in column 1 and rupees in thousands is being given in column 2. The first one is cash rupees 2 lakh. We have presented here 2 comma 0 0 as the particulars and amount is being reflected in thousands. So, cash here is 2 lakh, cash with RBI 1 lakh, balance with other bank 4 lakh, interest accrued 50 it is 50,000, government securities 3 lakh, term loans 12 lakh 75,000, cash credit and overdrafts 14 lakh 25,000, bills purchased and discounted 2 lakh 50,000, premises 13 lakh 75,000, furniture 2 lakh 50,000, other approved securities 1 lakh, interest 1 lakh 20,000, repairs 25,000, salaries 75,000, printing and stationery 35,000, postage and telegram 20,000. Together the total is 60 lakh for as debit side. So, let us analyze first debit side, cash it will be reflected in schedule 6. So, we can prepare schedule 6 and place cash over there, cash with RBI 1 lakh, again it is part of schedule 6, balance with other banks schedule 7 interest accrued will go in schedule 7, interest accrued will go in schedule 11 under other assets. Since it is interest accrued on asset side, debit side, so it is an asset. Government securities 3 lakh will go in schedule 8 that is of investment. Term loans, cash credit and bills purchased and discounted, they all are part of schedule 9 that is advances. And we know that in the balance sheet of bank, advances forms a major part. We sometimes need to prepare provision for it as per the guidelines provided in the master circular of RBI. Premises will go in schedule 10, it is 13,75,000 for fixed assets. Furniture will again be part of schedule 10 that is fixed assets. Other approved securities 1 lakh, it will go in schedule 8 that is investment interest, it is debit interest, it will go under schedule 15, it is expense. Repairs, salaries, printing stationery and postage, they are operating expenses and shall form part of schedule 16. So, we have analyzed the debit side of 60 lakh. Now, moving to the credit side, interest on advance, this is 8 lakhs, it will go in schedule 13, it is income interest from investment, again a income portion, it will go in schedule 13, accrued interest 75,000, schedule 5 is part, bills payable 25,000, it is part of schedule 5, commission exchange and brokerage schedule 14 for 2 lakh rupees, profit on sale of investment 20,000, schedule 14, other revenue receipts 80,000, again part of schedule 14, borrowings from RBI schedule 4, borrowings from other banks that is 3 lakh in schedule 4, share capital 
one uh, it is part of schedule 1 it is 20 lakhs statute reserve 9 lakh it is part of schedule 2 profit and loss it is profit and loss of previous year 6 lakh 50 thousand we will add up it in p and l itself now these three line of items that is fixed deposit 2 lakh 75 thousand saving account 3 lakh 25 thousand and current account 1 lakh 25 thousand will be the part of schedule third that is deposits so the credit side together is making the total of 60 lakhs so we are having a extract of trial balance where debits and credits are being given and we have assigned them to the appropriate schedules so we will prepare it one by one first of all let us analyze the additional information which is being given the additional information in the question says bills for collection is 235000 provisions on advances there is a guideline that advances should be classified as standard assets substandard assets doubtful assets doubtful again there is category secured and unsecured portion so the rate of making the provision is also being assigned and it changes from time to time we are not going into the detailed discussion of uh, making the provisions on advances as per the uh, rates and the uh, classification being given so let us analyze the figures of provision on advances it is given in thousands so bills purchased and discounted amount is given as 4.65 on cash credits and od 249.25 term loans 196.40 and total is 1450.3 so here it is a provision of 450300 now what we are going to do is in the advances schedule we will subtract the provisions and in the p and l it will be reflected under provisions and contingencies so double impact of this adjustment will be given bills for collection will be reflected as a additional information in the forms of notes to accounts a simple disclosure will be given after balance sheet there is one more schedule called schedule 12 that is of contingent liability since no data of contingent liability is being given so we are not discussing the same so let us move ahead towards the solutions first of all let us have a overview and a, a revision of the schedule of balance sheet the schedule of balance sheet is first one is for capital it is assigned the number one then schedule number two is reserves and surplus schedule number three deposits schedule number four borrowings schedule number five other liabilities and provisions it is making an aggregate of total capital and liability side of the balance sheet that is schedule one to five then we move towards asset side this is cash and bank balance with rbi schedule six balance with bank and money at call and short notice it is schedule seven investments is schedule 8 advance is schedule 9 fixed assets schedule 10 other assets schedule 11 contingencies and uh, liabilities that is contingent liability schedule 12 then bills for collections disclosure and notes to accounts this is the format of balance sheet and format of p and l is incomes interest earned is schedule 13 other incomes 14 expenditure interest expended schedule 15 operating expenses 16 provisions and contingencies would be reflected on the face of the balance sheet and working note will be prepared for it then net profit and loss net profit for the year we will add brought forward p and l that is previous years profit then appropriations will come 25 percent of the current profit would be transferred to statutory reserve then uh, balance will be transferred to balance sheet so now when we solve the question what we will do we will prepare the schedules of balance sheet first we will prepare the schedules of profit and loss account first that is from schedule 13 to 16 then we will prepare p and l account so we will have the balance to be carried forward to reserves then we will prepare the schedules from 1 to uh, 5 then 6 to 11 and then we will prepare the balance sheet so let us start up with the workings first of all we have prepared schedule 13 that is interest earned in our question interest earned was given as 8 lakhs so we have prepared entire balance sheet in thousands so here we have written 
uh, against interest 800, income on investment which was given on the credit side we have written over here as 125. So, our schedule 13th total is 925. So, we will place this 925 against schedule 13 in P and L. Then we will move for schedule 14 that is other income it is also prepared in rupees thousands. So, here we have identified already in our question that what items will fall under other incomes. So, we are working on credit side of our question. So, commission exchange brokerage is 200 here that is 2 lakh we have written 200 because I have already explained that it is being presented in thousands. So, commission exchange brokerage 200 profit on sale of investment 20 miscellaneous income is 80. So, schedule 14 aggregate is 300. So, we have got the income side total first is 925 again schedule 13 and again schedule 14 we have 300. Then we will prepare the schedule 15 for interest expended. Interest on deposit is being given to us on debit side that is 120. So, we will place it over here. Then operating expenses here salaries are given. So, we will write it as payment to and provision for employees 75, postage and telegram 20, printing and stationery 35, repairs and maintenance 25, aggregating 155. So, we will place this against the schedule 16 in our P and L. So, here is a P and L now schedules are prepared and from 13 to 16 we have placed the figures income interest earned schedule 13 925 other incomes schedule 14 300 925 plus 300 it is aggregating 1225 in rupees thousands expenditure interest expended we computed in our uh, schedule 15 it is placed over here 120 operating expenses total is 155 in schedule 16. Then we have provisions and contingencies. We have discussed it with our additional information that provision is being made on advances on bills purchased and discounted on cash credits terms loan and we have aggregated them it amounts to 450.30 we have placed over here and our total of uh, expenditure plus provision is 725.30. So, if we subtract 1225 minus 725.30, we will ascertain the net profit. So, net profit for the year amounts to 499.70. Profit and loss brought forward, it was given in our question that is 650. So, total profit is 1149.7. What we have done? We have transferred to statutory reserve. Statutory reserves profit is being transferred or appropriated from the annual profit at the rate of 25 percent. So, 499.70s of 25 percent is being transferred over here and balance is carried forward to the balance sheet that is 1024.77. Now, this figure 1024.77 we have worked out this figure will be placed in schedule 2 of the balance sheet. So, we are done with one part of preparation of balance sheet that is we have prepared the schedules of P and L and have prepared P and L and extracted the reserves amount. So, let us move ahead and prepare the balance sheet. First of all, we will prepare the schedules of balance sheet. Schedules of balance sheet would be first one is share capital. It is being given in the question for 2000 that is 20 lakh. So, we have prepared it in thousands. So, here it is written as 2000. Now, coming to schedule 2 reserves and surplus. Uh, statutory reserves opening balance is given as 900. Addition during the year is 124.93. It is 25 percent of the annual profit which we have appropriated from the P&L account. So, we have added it up, it is 1024.93. Then the profit which was extracted from PL account and carried forward to the balance sheet 
this amount is 1024.77 so adding up statutory reserve and general reserve that is pnl accounts profit we are getting the total of reserves and surplus as 2049.70 the third schedule is that of deposits. The three primary deposits we have identified in our question, they are demand deposits, saving deposits and term deposits. Demand deposit is 125, saving deposit is 325 and term deposit is 275 aggregating to 725. While analyzing the question, we have uh, already identified that they will go in the schedule 3 deposits account. So, we have placed these values in the schedule appropriately and we have got this figure. So, while making the balance sheet, we will simply insert the totals of these schedules uh, in against the against those schedule numbers. Schedule fourth is borrowings. Borrowings in India, Reserve Bank of India is given as 100 in the question, we have placed it, other banks 300. So, borrowings total is amounting to 400. Schedule 5 is other liabilities and provisions. Here, bills payable is 25 and uh, accrued interest is 75, aggregating as 100. Schedule 6 is cash and balance with RBI, cash in hand, that was the first item of our question. Here, we have written 200 and balance with RBI is 100. So, Schedule 6 total is 300. Schedule 7 balance with bank and money at call and short notice. In India, balance with bank that is other banks, it is 400 being given in the question is placed accordingly. Schedule 8 is investments. Investment in India, government securities was given 300, we placed it. Other approved security is 100, so aggregating to 400. Schedule number 8 total is 400. Now, coming to the most important schedule that is advances. We have three sort of advances bills purchased and discounted, cash credit and overdraft and term deposits. So, bills purchased and discounted which were given in our question were 250. We will reduce the provisions which are being given in our additional information against each line of advance. So, for bills purchased and deposit, we will deduct the provision of 4.65. Final value for bills purchased and discounted will come as 245.35. Cash credits and overdraft it is being given as 1425 in the question, we will reduce its provision to 49.25. So, the final value will be 1175.75. Term loan is given as 1275, we will deduct the provision of 196.40. So, the value which we will be getting is 1078. So, total of advances is 2499.70. So, from the advances, we have deducted 450.3 provision against each line item of the advance. Now, this total advances of 2499.70 will be reflected under advances head in the balance sheet against schedule number 9. Schedule 10 is fixed assets, premises 1375, other fixed assets including furniture and fixtures is 250. So, total 1625 will be reflected under schedule 10, other assets is having interest accrues amount 50. So, now we will see the face of the balance sheet, it is capital and liabilities uh, side first. So, capital schedule 1, it is it will be having 2000 as the value which has come from schedule 1, reserves and surplus is schedule 2 having value of 2049.70, it is aggregate of statutory reserves and p and l accounts amount which is being transferred to the schedule. Deposits schedule 3, 725 is the total which we have already calculated in schedule 3. Borrowings 400, schedule 4, other liabilities and provisions 100. So, the total of capital and liability side is 5000. 274.70 in thousands. Then we will move towards the asset side, cash and bank balance with RBI is 300. Balance with bank and money at call and short notice schedule 7 400. Investment schedule 8, we have placed the value as 400. 
advanced schedule line this aggregate value 2499.70 is net of adjusted uh, provision of advances. So, from advances we have deducted provision of advances and this amount uh, final amount is being reflected over here fixed assets schedule 10 1625 other assets schedule 11 50. So, the total of asset side is coming as 5274.70 which is equal to the total of liability side we have computed in previous slide 5274.70. Bills for collection would be reflected as a notes to the balance sheet for 235 and since there is no contingent liability, so schedule 12 we have uh, kept without giving any information as there is no information being given. So, this is the way balance sheet and p and is being prepared in the vertical format for any banking company. Further there could be additional adjustments in other questions where uh, rebate on bills discounted to be adjusted, provisions to be made on the assets, assets need to be classified first. So, since it is a simple example to understand the flow of preparation of different schedules and to place them properly against appropriate schedules to give a fair view of the balance sheet, we have taken up this example for our understanding. Now, students we are summarizing our discussion of today. In today's lecture, we have taken up a practical example and we have prepared schedule 1 to schedule 16 and also prepared p and account and balance sheet with the help of practical examples and various provisions are being understood in case of provisions of advances and other details. With this, we are ending up our discussion of today. Thank you.